Hey everybody, and we are off again. My name is Evan Jones. I'm the community manager for Pursuitery.com. Join me today is Mickey. Hey, Mickey. Hey. <laughs> We'd like to celebrate the fact that we did not talk over each other in the introduction today. <laughs> so thank you all for joining <laughs> us today. Uh, we're going to be doing some hints today for our third challenge, which is Coding with Scratch, The Horde. Uh, this is the third of five Coding with Scratch challenges offered by Pursuitery.com, uh, which you can see the link for below. And once you complete all five challenges, you'll get a Scratch Ninja Digital Badge. If you complete the challenges by August 24th at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time, because we're in California, as you probably know by now, you'll get the badge. But if you complete your challenge for the Horde within this week, meaning by Sunday night, 11.59 p.m. Pacific time, you'll be eligible to win a Makey Makey. You can check those out at makeymakey.com. There are awesome controllers that integrate with almost any computer system, and you can turn your Scratch game to something that you can control with fruit or a banana or all kinds of other things. They're a ton of fun. We use them at the office all the time. They're a great uh, stress reliever for us when we get uh, a little bit frazzled from all this scratching. I mean scratch coding um, and so it's a it's a really cool thing we're proud to bring that and get that entry in before 11:59 p.m. Pacific time on Sunday and you'll be eligible for a makey makey and if you're interested in seeing the award-winning makey makey contribution from last week you'll definitely want to join us for Thursday's prize time geek out hosted by Mickey at 10 a.m. PST again California love that's 10 a.m. on Thursday you can join and watch that on Pursuitery.com, and we'll be awarding the Makey Makey for last week's challenge. And again, if you have any questions, we'll answer them at the end of this geek out when we get into the questions that we've received for the maze game. Oh, pardon me, the horde. I'm so wrapped up. We've got several questions about the horde, which builds upon um, some of the games we've built so far. And some pretty good questions. This week's uh, we're dealing with a whole bunch of artificially controlled enemies that chase your player character around the screen, a wealth of enemies that you've got to somehow outsmart, outwit, and outlast. So code-specific questions, specifically stuff about improving your game, refining your code and your blocking, etc., should be directed to our Scratch coaches in our Scratch studio for Challenge 3. Now, if you see below my name, where it says Evan from Pursuitery.com, there's going to be a link there, and that is our challenge link for the Horde. So you can jump on Pursuitery.com using that link, and you get right into the challenge. We'll talk about how to join in a second. And you'll also need a Scratch account from scratch.mit.edu. Both of these are, of course, the price of absolutely nothing. They're free. They're free to use. And we welcome you all to jump in. But you can find a link to help for code specific questions at Pursuitery.com um, if you follow that link below, which you'll see under my name. And so if you just go to that link below, you'll see something that says chat with Scratch Coaches, and that can get your code-specific questions answered. Again, if, you have, if you're watching the live broadcast and you have questions for us, uh, you can comment on, per, directly on Pursuitery.com's challenge page. We'll read them right now. And you can also tweet them to us at, I'm going to show Mickey, he's got a hashtag, coding with Scratch. So there you go. All right, so today's Geek Out is about some hints. Uh, it's going to be very quick. We're just going to break down what you need to participate, how to submit challenges, and how to get help. And then we're going to answer a few questions there. And remember, on Friday, we have a show and tell where we'll be showing off your projects. So go ahead and submit your projects to us in the next couple of days, and we'll talk to them on Friday, July 4th, holiday time. Okay, so that's going to, again, all Geek Outs will be at 10 a.m. Pacific. And so just list that there. And uh, first off, again, to break it down, you're going to need a Scratch account, which is free at scratch.mit.edu. Uh, you'll also need to join Pursuitery.com, which is also free. Um, to join this first challenge, pardon me, to join this challenge, you're going to need to just sign up on, on Pursuitery and click Participate on the Coding with Scratch the Horde Challenge. Again, just be logged in. You can do it from there. Uh, you'll then see a submit challenge button on the page. That will be probably in the upper. That will be in the upper right. Click on that. You'll be able to submit your link to your scratch entry on your scratch page. And again, the deadline for this week 
opportunity to be eligible for the Makey Makey game is 11.59 p.m. Pacific Time on Sunday night, which I believe is the 6th. So if you need to edit your submission, if you already got something in, you can go back to the challenge page and click edit your submission and update your listing. Note that we had a question about this earlier. If you've submitted something to us and you were going for the Makey Makey, um, if you've completed your entry that you've submitted, that's going to be the entry that we're going to judge on, so you can't come back like a week later to it. Uh, we're trying to do those within the week. So as far as getting help goes, if you visit the Scratch Studio for Challenge 3, which is linked below, as you can see, where it says intr.st forward slash and all that good stuff. If you visit the Scratch Studio for Studio 3, you can leave comments or questions for our judges. Again, you can also uh, tweet them to us using the hashtag you'll see under Mickey's name here where it says Coding with Scratch. And we will answer any questions that we get and address them. And we'd like to give a big shout out to all of our coaches and people helping out with this. A lot of people doing some really, really great work and a lot of people doing some really great games and people are having a really good time with it. And again, everybody, the whole point of this is to have a whole lot of fun with Scratch. It's not like a hard coded assignment. It's not something that you've got to tear out your hair over. It's not something you got to worry about at all. Just have fun and make your game, tell your story. It's something that you could just approach with a light heart and We've seen some amazing work so far, and some of the stuff's blown me away, and I've got friends who are amazing, amazing, I do this for a living and have for 20 years game designers, and some of it's rivaling some of their work, but don't tell them. So moving on to talking about the Horde Challenge. Uh, the Horde Challenge has two components, as we've discussed earlier. Uh, component number one, create a sprite that clones itself multiple times, hence the Horde. Uh, and component number two, have the clone sprites interact with the character sprites, meaning your character. So as far as questions and answers go, I'd like to remind everybody that we've got a video on the challenge page, and we also have a hints video that gives some ideas and some tips on it on this page, and again, visit the Scratch Coaches Studio to ask any more questions that you have, but we've got a few in the forum so far that I want to take some time to address. Um, Mickey is scouring Twitter and checking Pursuitry out. And uh, Mickey, if you see anything, please just go ahead and leave me a note in the text, and I will answer the questions accordingly. And uh, thank you so very much for all of your help, and thank you for Mickey, our summer youth ambassador, who's amazing for her help as well. So here are the couple questions that I'm going to read through, and I'll give you some tips. Uh, this question came through, I believe, on the forums. How do I make sure my sprites look in the right direction. Um, look being a relative term, I assume we mean facing, um, as you were. Look, facing, we know how it goes. Sometimes you're going left, you want your character sprites and your horde sprites to look left as well. So looking at your script, now there's several portions of each script, as we know, you've got your backgrounds, you have your, you have your different backgrounds, you have your sprites, you have your uh, your broadcast stuff. You've got to look at the script for one particular part at a time. This is something that people should. It throws you sometimes, but keep it in mind. You've got to look at the particular sp uh, code and the particular script, pardon me, for each sprite and whatnot. And in this case, click on your sprite's info section. If you look at your sprite in the lower left there, when you click on the, the costume section, you'll see those sprites, and you can see an eye on it as in the letter I, that's the info. Click on that, and you've got an option to adjust its rotation properly to what fits your circumstances. Now, there are three types of rotation, as you may remember from our first challenge. Uh, in this case, user had some issues with, uh, I believe, some snakes they wanted to fix. So it's cleaned up by rotating all the, costume, all the costumes 90 degrees clockwise using that uh, those three little buttons that you'll see when you click on the info section of the sprite. So that's how you adjust rotation rules. Um, again, there's a hint on that a while back that we had messed with it, and you can adjust it to move left and right accordingly. There's also an all the way around, and there's, I believe, a, a never move one. But again, that's, that's up to you and just a question of refining your code blocks and your game. So number two question, why do my clones disappear? How can I refine them a bit? Wow, so this is a bit of a long one, so it's gonna take it's gonna take me just a second. Um, again, while I answer it, feel free if you have any other questions, uh, you can leave them on the Pursuery Challenge page or uh, tweet them to us using Coding with Scratch, which uh, you'll see under Mickey's 
is it is it a lower third? Is that what the, is that what the kids call it in Hangout Land? I believe. <laughs> um, just use the hashtag coding with scratch, and we will get to them. Um, so here's a way to think of this: uh, How do I make sure my clones disappear, or why do my clones disappear in general? Um, clones are temporary sprites, and the cloning tool is an important part of the horde challenge. They're not quite the same as the original sprite. Uh, because they can disappear. So if you look at the intro video we posted, which, again, I keep pointing to this, and it'll, it uh, it's very good for what ails you on the basics, at the uh, link below me on the challenge page. If you look at that intro video, at the bottom of one of the sections of it, there is a delete this clone block when you get to dealing with your clones that will allow us to get rid of the clone, and in that case, the video we catch the cat, and what we did was simply have the clone delete itself. It just goes poof, right out of existence, and so it's gone. Now, by manipulating those control blocks, you can control the number of clones that are on the screen at any given time, and then it's just a question of refining how your clones work. Uh, one suggestion was to use the wait block to make sure all the clones don't show up at the same time, and you can spread the clones out via different placement. This is a good way to refine things. In our example video on the clone script, where it says to start as a clone, it actually mentions go to this particular spot. And by placement, I mean the X and the Y axis, or axes, if that's how it's pronounced. But going to this particular spot basically means that the clones will generate in a different place and you can randomize this uh, using under operators there's a random number generator called pick random and you can use that to randomize the starting location so then you've got all these different clones and you've got a horde and it's showing up in different places and whatnot so that's a good way not only to understand why your sprites disappear because that's that's how that code is functioning, but also how you can refine them so it's not as uniform. So one last check of the social channels, um, and we'll see if there's anything else I can take care of any of that. Again, please look at uh, the, the link that I'm pointing to behind. Well, now it's behind. Now it's in front of the link below. That is the Horde Challenge, and that'll give you links to our Coaches Studio as well, where it says, uh, chat with scratch coaches and again, please keep tweeting us and asking us your questions But those appear to be the big ones for today, and those are actually pretty refined questions So I'm, I'm happy with that. And I'm hoping everybody gets everything into us on Time so we'll be eligible for a makey makey again get those in by Sunday night at uh, 11 59 p.m. Pacific time and on Friday July 4th because we don't even stop for the holidays. We just party all the way through with the scratch. Um, join me as I eat barbecue on my couch. Just kidding. Uh, join me at 10 a.m. for the, uh, the Horde show and tell. Uh, please submit your projects to us if you want those on. Please let us know about them. Even if you're still refining them, just let me know, and we will give them a look, and we'll possibly get to showcase them, because we get a number of them coming in, and they're all really cool. I'd love to show some of them off. They'll be Friday, July 4th, 10 a.m. is the show and tell. And on Thursday, first things last, we're going to do the prize time giveaway, and Mickey will be hosting that. <laughs> Indeed. I was, a, I was a little slow on the compliment there, but uh, Mickey will be hosting that on Thursday, July 3rd at 10 a.m. for the prize time geek out where you'll see who won the Makey Makey from last week's, and we stagger that by the week. And uh, so that's going to go ahead and be it. Again, on behalf of everybody at Pursuitery.com and our partners at Scratch and our coaches on the Internet and our friends and everybody else who's been involved with us, thank you so very much for taking the time to work with us on Coding with Scratch. We hope you're having a great time. We hope you're building games and telling stories that you're really enjoying working on. Please keep the questions and the challenges coming in. Please keep submitting. We are here to help, and again, we are having an absolute blast, and we appreciate it and look forward to seeing you soon on Pursuitery.com. Take care. Bye-bye.